Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us for worship here on YouTube. My name is Joe Lehman. I'm the worship and music director here at Mantra Zion United Methodist Church in Akron, Ohio. We're happy that you found your way to our YouTube page this morning, or this afternoon, or this evening. Whenever you're watching this, let this be our gift to you. We're going to start by doing some singing. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Till I met you I was breathing but not My failures I've tried to hide It was my tomb Till I met you Cause when you called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day called my name and I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day now your mercy has saved my soul now your freedom is all I know The old made new Jesus, when I met you Cause when you called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day called my name and I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day I needed rescue my sin was heavy chains break at the weight of your glory I needed shelter I was an orphan now you call me a citizen of heaven when I was broken you were my healing now your love is the air that I'm breathing I have a future my eyes are open cause when you call my name and I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day Welcome to worship here online at Mantra Zion United Methodist Church. My name is Jennifer Dyer. I'm the director of Youth and Young Adults. I have a few announcements for us this morning. The first one is that next week we will begin our in-person worship services, both at 9 and 11. We will do in-person worship as well as live streaming. So you're going to want to tune in next week at 9 or 11, or both if you'd prefer. If you forget and decide to watch the services on Mondays or Tuesdays or any other day during the week, they'll be posted on our YouTube channel. So don't worry, you can still have church any day of the week. Today is All Saints Day, and so we will be later in our service honoring those who have passed away in the last year. 
Just a reminder, if you're watching this on Sunday, we are having our luminary prayer walk, we're calling a night of remembrance, at from 5 to 6.30. So you're welcome to come to the church and remember all of those people that we've lost at any point in our lives um, and use it as a time of prayerful reflection and meditation. My last announcement is that we are having communion today. So if you want to pause the, the video right now and go get your communion elements, or you can pause it later in the service. But just to give you a heads up, we will be including a communion liturgy later in this service. That's the last announcement I have for you this morning. Let's continue with our worship. Good morning, kids. This is time for your, your children's moment, so come on down close to the TV screen because this is your time. I was uh, bringing for my children's moment today my lunch that I had packed for myself, and I was really excited because I grilled out hamburgers yesterday, and I was like, I had a couple extras. I was like, man, I'm going to save that for lunch. And so I brought it for lunch today, and, and I packed myself my drink here, so I'm excited about that. And I'm real smart because I was going to bring some, some ketchup, some ketchup to put on my hamburger, and, and some mustard to put on my hamburger too. I've got my mustard and my ketchup. And I was really smart, because I know I don't like to escort it on there. I brought a knife for it too. Um, so I'm ready to go. But wait a second. I think I forgot the hamburger. How in the world can I have packed my lunch and have forgotten the most important thing? You know, you see, sometimes in life we get so busy with details, with like details like ketchup and mustard and knives and what drink we're going to have, that we sometimes forget the most important thing that matters the most. I, uh, I heard a story one time about two sisters named Mary and Martha. And Jesus went to visit those sisters. And when he went to go visit them, Mary, the one sister, sat right down at Jesus' feet and was so ready to see him and so ready to visit with him. She gave his, that, his Jesus 100% of her time and 100% of her attention. Now Martha, on the other hand, was trying to get the house ready for Jesus to come over. So she was running around picking up her toys. She was running around cleaning up the back rooms and, and making little treats. And, and the whole time that Jesus was there, Martha was running all over the house trying to get all of these other details done, all these other things done to the point where she finally got angry at her sister Mary. And she yelled at Mary. She said, why in the world are you not helping me with any of these things? And what she was un, 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 unknowingly, what she was telling Jesus was that she was just too busy to visit with him because all of the details were more important than the most important thing for her. You see, the most important thing that day was not cleaning the house. The most important thing was spending time with Jesus. Now, when I was a kid about your age, I used to always want my mom to play with me. I wanted her to play Star Wars with me. I had a Death Star, and I had all of my little action figures. But my mom always had certain activities, certain things that she needed to do. She wanted to vacuum that day. She had to clean the dishes. She wanted to read the newspaper. She had certain things that she wanted to do. And as a kid, I used to think to myself, well, gosh, probably my mom's biggest dream in life, her calling, is to do all of this work. Because as a kid, you just don't realize that moms and dads, they've got dreams too. And so rather than just simply be frustrated with her that she wasn't playing with me, I decided to help her out. And so I decided I would be the one that would vacuum the house. And because I helped my mother out, together all of those little details, all of those little things, all of those little chores, they got done so much faster. And then we were able to get down with the most important things which is to spend time together and to play together. And my mom would get down on the ground with me and pick up the Star Wars action figures, and we would play. And that for me, and probably for her, was the most important part of the day. And so friends, we have to realize that there are lots of details in life that we need to pay attention to. But we can't forget that the most important thing is the love that God shares with us. It was a love that Jesus brought to Mary and Martha that day. And it's a love that God wants us to share amongst each other. So yes, pay attention to the details in life, but don't forget 
the most important thing. Let's go to prayer. Dear God, help us use our time not to be distracted by the details and the chores, but to remember the most important things. That's your love that is so great that Jesus brings into each of our homes. Amen. This is Psalm 39, verse 4 through 5. Lord, let me know my end, and what is the measure of my days. Let me know how fleeting my life is. You have made my days a few hand breaths, and my lifetime is as nothing in your sight. Surely everyone stands as a mere breath. Dear friends, grace to you and peace from God, who is and was and is to come, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, the ruler of the kings on earth, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Dear friends, in this very first Sunday of the month of November, we celebrate All Saints Sunday. And so we take pause to remember the, friend, the lives of friends and our loved ones who have mattered so very much to all of us. We give thanks to the God for the words of wisdom that they have shared with us, for the way in which they have illuminated our path, and the way in which they have touched our hearts and moved God's kingdom forward. So friends, let us remember. Dr. Walt Chisholm. Catherine Cook. Sue Dye Moran. Dorothy M. Falk. Dale Garris. James McIntyre. Jeffrey Snyder. As we continue in this time of reflection and prayer, I would like to remind you of the people we have listed in our newsletter to keep those people in your thoughts and prayers, as well as all of those who have lost a loved one this year. Please join me in a time of prayer. Blessed are you, God of creation and all beginnings, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of apostles and martyrs, God of our mothers and fathers, God of our children to all generations. You made us in your image, and though we all have sinned and fallen short of your glory, you love the world so much, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. Through his suffering and death, his resurrection and ascension, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, made with us a new covenant, and baptized with us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Therefore, in remembrance of all your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer our lives in your service. 
as a living and holy surrender of ourselves. Send the power of your Holy Spirit on us, that we may know the presence of the living Christ, be one body in him, and grow into his likeness. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those whom we name before you. May we run with perseverance the race that is set before us, being surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses and looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, and to his coming and final victory through him, with him, in him, and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, now and forever, God. Lord, we join together in the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My big butt is eating food, but at church we get to have pancake breakfast. My big butt is when my coach tells me something to do, I always make up, but I'm injured. But faith tells me to push through it and get it done. My big butt is, is I'm always where I don't have enough time with work and everything else going on to be able to help the church properly. But my faith tells me to take it one little step at a time and I'll be able to accomplish big things. Additionally, I've not been acquainted with everyone at this church yet. So it can be um, a little bit stressful when meeting people for the first time just because I want to try to make a good first impression. But I really do um, want to try my best to be involved in the church in whatever ways I can by trying to manage my time wisely and getting past the anxiety which comes with um, trying something new and meeting new people. The second scripture reading today is Luke 10, verses 38 to 42. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care for, that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is a need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. Friends, welcome back to Online Worship. My name is Bill Lyming. I'm the minister here at uh, Montrose Zion United Methodist Church. And we're going to continue on talking about the great excuses that we have to face and overcome in life. And so I was thinking a little bit about that, and I was asked myself, what is a definition of an excuse, or what makes up an excuse? Because frankly, we all have excuses in our lives that can become crippling and can cause us to miss out on the most important things in life. Our excuses can fail, cause us to fail to pursue life's goals and cause us in the long run to look back with regret, wishing we had spent this great gift of time that we have differently. We all have those big excuses in our lives that get in the way of good, faithful living. But I just don't have enough energy. But I just don't have uh, enough people to help me. The United Methodist Church has been plagued with these excuses and so many others to the point in which we found ourselves withering on the vine. Yet in our indiv individual lives, our family lives, and our corporate lives, we would be fools to think that life isn't going to be filled with obstacles and challenges. And one of the greatest obstacles are the excuses that we make. Now, the important thing is that we face the obstacles. We're all going to have excuses, but what we do with those excuses matters tremendously. And so what is an excuse? Or what defines them? 
To make an excuse, then, according to an online dictionary, means that we choose to deflect our responsibility for our actions or our lack of actions. It means that until we take responsibility for our own living, everything that we value, everything that we forever um, will, everything that we want in life, will forever remain out of reach because someone or something just won't give it to us. They just won't give us what we want. But Bill, I just don't have enough time. And that's the excuse that I want to focus on today. That may be true that we don't have a lot of time, and so to the point, let's stop wasting the time that we've been given, because the fact remains, God has actually given us just enough time to go and fulfill the calling that he's placed upon our shoulders. I want you to hear words from Psalm 39 that says this. It says, Show me, O Lord, my life's end in the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting life is. You have made my days a mere hand's breath. The span of my years is nothing before you. Each of our lives is but a breath. And so, friends, if you knew, you, if you knew how much time you had left, what would you stop wasting your time on? Or on the flip side of that, if you knew how much time you had left, what would you begin doing? When we were young, we thought we had unlimited time. The fact is, we don't. And perhaps as we get older, we think, perhaps the time, my time has passed me by. Let the younger ones go and do that job. Friends, I want you to remember that the time we've been given is a gift. And like any gift that is given to us by our God and our Savior, it needs to be used wisely. Now, many of us know and remember that our, our dear friend Walt Chisholm died just a few months ago. Now, Walt retired several times throughout his career, but not really, if by retirement you mean that he stopped doing what God had called him to do. The first time Walt retired, he retired as an ordained elder here in the East Ohio Conference, but he didn't really retire because he simply came back to this congregation and became a visitation minister. Now, after several years of serving as a visitation minister, Walt officially retired from that again, but he didn't stop serving. He continued to pursue God's calling upon him, and he helped to teach a classroom, a, a Sunday school class over in our conference room here at our church. Now, eventually, Walt retired from that, and he moved over to the Renaissance, but when he discovered the Renaissance didn't have any worship services there, he took it upon himself at over 90 years old to begin a brand new congregation amongst his friends who lived with him at the Renaissance. When he discovered just one worship service wasn't enough, he started two worship services, a midweek service and his regular Sunday service. Now in the world of the pandemic that we all were living in back in April, back as Easter was coming around, Walt probably had every excuse in the book not to bother trying to learn a new thing, not to get his normal group of congregation together to celebrate Easter Sunday. You see, because of the pandemic, there was a real concern for the health of his friends there at the Renaissance, and there was a real fear of spreading the coronavirus. But Walt Chisholm was never a man who was defined by his excuses, and Walt Chisholm was never a person to give up. And so at the age of 90 plus, Walt Chisholm made the decision to try something brand new and to continue to pursue his calling. His relatives came into the room in which Walt lived, and they videotaped Walt's Easter Sunday message. And his, I want you to hear, with just literally with months and even days left in his life, Walt delivered the biggest Easter message of the words of hope and words of resurrection to the largest congregation he had ever had. His message went out across the online community, and he delivered his message of hope and resurrection in Jesus Christ to over 5,000 people. Friends, when we pursue God's calling upon us, we don't go out with a whimper, but rather we go forward in glory. And so if you're a teacher, don't ever stop teaching. There's so much that this world needs to learn. If you have the gift of wisdom, then don't ever stop speaking because there is somebody who needs your direction. If you have the gift of organization, then by all means organize in this world that is unraveling in chaos. And if you have the gift of creativity, then please, please, please create something beautiful to heal this world that is divided and full of hatred and ugliness and fear. 
Whatever your gift may be, use the time that you have to fulfill the glory that God has invested within you. I want you to hear that again. Use the time that you have to fulfill the glory of the time that God has invested within you. God is investing within you. And so in days in which I complain that I don't have enough time, Jennifer Dyer says this to me. She says, Bill, we all have the same 24 hours, but how we use that time is up to us. And these are good words of wisdom to continually be reminded of. Frankly, we have all the time that we need to do what must be done, but it's up to us to manage it. And so when our big excuses get in the way and I cry out, I would love to pursue my calling, but I just don't have enough time. We need to be honest with ourselves. What I'm really saying is that I, well, I'm, I choose to spend my time on things that really don't matter to me that much. Or have you ever said to yourself, I would pursue my dream, but it's just not the right time. There may be valid roadblocks that jump up in our way, particularly in this strange new world that we're adapting to. And so if your dream is to start a brand new business, you may look at the economy right now with all these unknowns and balls in the air, knowing, not knowing where those balls are going to land. And you might say, maybe this is not the right time to take out a large loan. But you might go on to say, I would pursue my dreams, but I have so many other things going on. Or I'd pursue my dreams, but I don't have enough education yet. Friends, we cannot control every outside circumstance around us. And there is no magic genie's bottle that we can rub to make all of our dreams come true. But when we let outside factors beyond our control limit what God has called us to do, frankly, that is on us. And so when I say that I would pursue my dreams, I would pursue my calling, but it's just not the right time, what I'm actually saying is, I am waiting for the perfect time to come. A perfect time that I know will never arrive. Waiting for the right time can cause us to stall out and fall into a spiritual paralysis. And the only way to break that paralysis is to take one step in faith and begin making positive movement towards our goals. And so friends, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are called to take initiative over the lives and the time that God has given us. It means we will reclaim our lives and we will reclaim our time from the excuses that hold us back. When I think about my life's goal, perhaps not every step towards my life's goal needs to be taken today. It's not like I need to accomplish my entire life's goal tomorrow. But taking one step forward, one positive step forward for the love of our Savior and for the sake of the world, each day, it matters. And so when our world was shut down back in March, several of us paused for a moment and we thought, holy smokes, what do we do now? You see, every way I've ever known to connect with people has always been in person. It's always been face to face. And I have to admit, throughout these last couple months, suffering through several faith crises, and I'm still struggling through faith crises in this present moment. Moments in which you just want to quit. Moments in which you just want to give up. And you don't want to adapt to the changing world. But I've got to tell you, I am blessed with a wife named Cindy who is constantly thinking of something new in that crazy brain of hers. And because of the way her brain works, she helps me to see things in a new way also. I'm beyond blessed to work with Joe Lehman and Jennifer Dyer, who are not defined by the excuses of life. Rather, they are creatively defined by the opportunities that they see before them. And you may not have met Matt Pryor yet. Matt is our newest hire. He started working with us in December of 2019. And he's our maintenance and custodial person. But Matt has a unique ability to identify the problem, to identify the obstacle before us, and then with a bit of humor, not let that obstacle become an anchor that drags us down. Matt and I joke together that we're going to co-author a book about church life that's called Life from Lessons from Behind the Mop. But friends, the perfect time in which all obstacles will be removed will never come. But all we have is time. And it is always the right time to take a positive step forward in faith. And so I want to finish up today's sermon with uh, uh, the story of Mary and Martha, two sisters whom Jesus went to visit one day. And when Jesus arrived at Mary and Martha's home, they were both busy getting ready for him to arrive. And as soon as he walked through the door, Mary stopped everything. She sat down at Jesus' feet and she gave Jesus 100% of her attention. 
Martha, on the other hand, realized there was still a lot of work to be done in the house, and so she ran around the house cleaning up the bathrooms, cleaning up the kitchen, making some food, cleaning up the living room, until at long last her busyness caused her to break, and she yelled at her sister Mary. She said, why in the world are you not helping me with all of this stuff? Now, Martha was unintentionally sending a message to Jesus. I don't think she meant to send it, but she inadvertently was telling Jesus that I'm just too busy for you. I would sit down with you, but I don't have enough time. I would love to listen to what you have to say, but all of these chores that I am doing are just more important than you. I think to myself, my goodness, how often do we inadvertently send that message to the people who matter most to our lives? I'm just too busy for you. My mom used to call me back before the days of cell phones and leave me a message on my voicemail. And she would say, Billy, I miss you. I haven't heard your voice for a while. I'd love to hear what's going on with your life down in Atlanta. Now, after several days, I would eventually get around to calling my mother back. And it would always start off, the conversation would always start off with the same horrible excuse. Oh, mom, I would have called you back earlier, but I've been so busy. I would have called you back earlier, but I just don't have enough time. The reality was, that's a lie. It wasn't true. I had just made the determination that whatever I was doing in my life in those days was more exciting and more interesting than calling my mother back. But then mom died when she was 56 years old and I was only 25. And through the years, I have cried out and complained that I never had enough time with my mother. Perhaps some of these years I blamed God for taking my mother too early. I didn't have enough time. Friends, how foolish was I? The answer is, I was very foolish. Twenty years later, in hindsight, I realized now that I had plenty of time with my mother. I just made the horrible excuse and the horrible mistake to say, but I am just too busy. I wasn't too busy. I just chose to make the same excuse that got Martha stuck, but I just don't have enough time. The reality is, friends, that God has given us everything that we need. God has given us all the time that we need, but we have to continually look at it as the gift that it is and use our gift wisely not to be too busy for the people who matter most, not to be too busy to pursue the calling that God has placed upon us, and never to be too busy such that we let the little obstacles in life become paralyzing mountains that stop us. Our time together, it is a gift. So let us all use it so that God's will be done. And so in this upcoming week, I want you to identify two things. Number one, identify for whom have you been too busy in your life? Who is the person that matters tremendously to you that you have said, gosh, I would spend more time with this person, but I'm just too busy. The second thing is, what is the life goal, the longing of your heart, the thing that you have been placed on this earth to do, that you have just been too busy to take a step forward to pursuing? Carve out some time this week for both. And I've got to tell you, the the time that you carve out will probably be the best part of your entire coming week. Friends, remember, we have everything that we need to go and live a life that is pleasing to God. Amen. Friends, as we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion today, I would like to encourage you to grab a little piece of bread so that when we can do communion, you'll have the bread element. Um, If you don't have um, grape juice, you can use any juice along with you. If you have a little grape, or even if you have a piece of fruit, or kids, if you have any fruit snacks at home, whatever it is, God will bless it. And the ultimate point is that we're gathering together as God's people in communion with our Savior who loves us dearly. Also, one of the things that I love about the Methodist Church is that it is an open table. And so, friends, if you don't belong to the Montreux Zion United Methodist Church and you happen to be watching us online, I just want you to know that all of us are welcome to receive God's grace. Everyone is welcome to come to the table 
and that God's grace is extended to everyone. So let us draw, draw near with faith. Christ our Lord invites to His table all who love Him and seek to grow into His likeness. And so let us draw near with faith and make our humble confession and prepare to receive this holy sacrament. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved You with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done Your will. We have broken Your law. We have rebelled against Your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. In love you made, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, it was your love that remained steadfast. You bid your faithful people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Easter feast, that renewed by your word and sacraments and fervent in prayer and works of justice and mercy, we may come to the fullness of grace that you have prepared for those who love you. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to redeem the world. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born into our likeness. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. He took upon himself our sin and death, and he offered himself as a perfect sacrifice for the sin of the world. Now by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to his heavenly Father, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, in remembrance that I will die for you. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to his heavenly Father, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this as often as you do in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim this mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, if we take the bread, take and eat in remembrance that Christ died for you. And as we receive the cup, Take and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you. Amen. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your, your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen.
This is a day of new beginnings Time to remember and move on Time to believe what love is bringing Laying to rest the pain that's gone For by the life and death of Jesus God's mighty spirit now has then Can make for us a world of difference As faith and hope are born again Then let us with the spirit's daring Step from the past and leave behind our disappointment, guilt, and grieving Our God is making all things new In faith we'll gather round the table To taste and share what love can do This is a day of new beginnings our God is making all things new. Dear friends, remember God has given us everything that we need and that includes the time that we have in our lives. Let's not squander our time with things that ultimately have little significance to our own life's calling nor to the people who matter the most to us. Let us always make space and time for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and invite him into our lives and give him 100% of our attention. And go in peace and may God's richest blessings be with you now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>